sorry if I look a little unkempt right now, but uh, as you can tell, I've been busy. Whole brand new room set up. Got the whole got the whole place open now. It's not the uh, half office cubicle, half walk-in closet sort of deal that I had before. And as you can see right here, I have a brand new mic. Of course, I can't really show it off in the best of ways here because it's a live video, but uh, still. Okay, to tell the truth, I've had this mic for a few months now. Uh, if you've seen my streams, uh, you would know that I swapped to it back in, I think, January or February? I've had it for a while. Honestly, could have used it for the past couple of videos, but uh, I kind of wanted to keep, like, a, a narrative consistency or this is something like that, you know? I mean, honestly, I'm less concerned about the quality of the audio, although it's definitely a positive. It's more just to make video editing go a lot smoother, because audio editing with the lower quality mic, with all the peaking and whatever was going on, with how I wanted the mic and everything, just made making videos take way longer than I would have wanted to. Like, to give an example, with the Sephiroth video I made back in December when he came out, I was almost able to edit that whole thing within about a day. I was pretty proud of myself. Then I had to do the audio balancing, and with the way I wanted to do it, to make sure it was to the level of standards I wanted, it ended up almost doubling editing time. I mean, granted, there's probably better ways of doing it, I probably could've just thrown an equalizer on it, but, uh... <laughs> I didn't know what an audio equalizer was until a couple months ago. You know, you think you don't have to watch those, like, mistakes that new streamers or content creators make. Watch this video so you can miss those mistakes. And they're like, no, I'll be fine. I know what I'm doing. Apparently not. Ugh. But, yeah. You might be wondering why I decided to move things around in the room here. Well, that's uh, for a couple reasons, actually. Because first off, the lighting at this position of the room is atrocious. As you can see, I have a window right here that I'd always have to cover, and that would take a bunch of time on its own unless I just wanted to hang up an ugly blanket, which I didn't want to do. Plus, I have a ceiling lamp right here, which is yellow light. I probably could just get some white light bulbs, but still, it's right there, and it's not the best, you know, lighting, as you can see. Plus, the window being back there doesn't help for having glare in the middle of the day on my computer screen. Not really a fan of that. And second, because my bed is right here, and I would rather not show where I sleep most of the time. Because that's weird. And finally, it's just not a lot of space. I mean, again, my bed is right here. I have about, like, this much space. This is, like, two feet or so of just an empty row where I can move around. It's really not a lot. Like, th this chair barely fits. So yeah, this is more or less what the setup looked like. It was just, you know, bed, chair, desk with everything. The panels and all that. It's, it's just, you know, it's a solid room, but it's a, it's very cramped. It gave me what I wanted, but I don't really need what I wanted back in the day now. So... There's hardly any room in my room to actually record me doing things. So that's another reason why I decided to do the whole move around with my furniture. And I was going to show those reasons off on this whiteboard over here. Because the thing is, I want to try to get like a whiteboard for some of the live segments of my videos now. But I wanted one on wheels, because uh, this clearly is not going to work. But the problem is, buying whiteboards on like wheels and stuff triples the price of them. I got this thing for like 30 bucks or so. Getting one on wheels, I probably would have had to pay like at least a hundred. It's ridiculous. So I'm just figured, fuck it, I'm gonna make it myself. Probably gonna save not as much as I thought it was, but still, it'll, it'll, it'll be an amount I save. Like, I already got the wheels right here. I just need to like, attach them to some wood, put them on a stick or something, screw them in like how I want it. Bam, whiteboard on wheels for way less than a hundred dollars. Number one, space. As you could tell with the setup of my old place, it was pretty crowded. It was kind of like a half office cubicle that also doubled as an apartment bedroom and half a walk-in closet. Not because I needed a walk-in closet, just because, I mean, it's kind of like a big indent in the wall. I can't really do anything about that. Now, with the bigger room, if I want to do something like, say, We Fit or VR, maybe, I can totally do that because look at this. Look at all this space. Look at all this space. It's amazing. 
I can actually extend my arms and not hit anything. It's fantastic. Number two, lighting. With where I was with my old setup, I was right in front of the window, which since I pretty much only record during the day with this kind of stuff, because it's the only time I have, the windows would be like a huge bright point and just completely take away from the video. So I'd have to cover it up and uh, that would take time. Now the windows are right there, right behind the camera and hopefully the light will be shining on me now and not the camera lens. I don't know how well it's gonna do, but worst case, I can just throw a blanket on it and I don't have to worry about how good it looks now. And the third reason, if I can call correctly, why I changed my setup is cleaning. Yeah, because when you had the desk, because, okay, let, let, let me illustrate this for you. The desk was about like right here. And then there was a game shelf about right here. And then the bed right here was tilted 90 degrees towards the wall where the camera is. So I would have to come into the room, vacuum a little bit, vacuum down there, keep going, go to the right in the space between the desk and the bed, and then there'd still be a little bit of space right here. And the thing is, that doesn't sound too terrible, but then you also have to remember, I have to clean under the bed, and like, there's not a lot of space under here. It's like maybe six inches or so. And I have to be able to vacuum and mop under there, and when, it's, and when there's like hardly any space between the bed and the desk, it gets tricky. And it also doesn't help that the desk I was using at the time had drawers. So it's like there wasn't a lot of leg room to move around under there. Not just to clean under the desk, but under the bed as well. Which also reminds me, I have a new desk. I'll probably show it off at a different angle, but uh, it's pretty nice. It's a gaming table and I was kind of on the fence about that. But with the options I looked around online, it kind of seemed like this would be a perfectly fine option. And so far, I'm perfectly happy with it. I got enough space for my three monitors. I've got plenty of leg room. I don't think I'll have any problems with ergonomics or cleaning. It seems like a good purchase so far, and let's hope that stays that way. The only problem is it came with a mouse pad, and uh, I mean, <laughs> look at look at this thing. Holy shit! Oh, oh. Look at this thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's cool. It's got holes for the grommets because there's grommets for the wires, which uh, it, honestly, wire management for this table has been perfectly good. But uh, yeah, this thing is way too big and I don't need this. Like, I know I bought a gamer table, but I'm not trying to go for a whole gamer aesthetic. You know, I say with three monitors, a gamer chair, and then a gamer table, and then I have a bunch of gamer posters and stuff on the walls. Who am I trying to fool? So yeah, wanting to rearrange my room and then actually doing it has helped keep me busy from doing other things I've wanted to do, as well as a few other things such as work, worrying about life stuff, and then of course, working on my backlog of videos. Now I know it took a while for the past couple of videos to come out, but I do have semi-legitimate reasons for that. I mean, sure, there was the Smash GSP video I made in between them, but it still did take me over seven months to go between TF2 Crouch 1 and Crouch 2. And to be honest, the reason why it took so long with that, as well as Smash GSP 1.5 and then all of the montage videos after that, is sort of due to a mix of things. Those things being laziness, of course, and a lack of motivation. Because granted, I do like making videos. I still do enjoy doing this. I wouldn't do it if I hated doing it or anything like that. It's just, I feel like with the type of content I was making, it wasn't exactly keeping my attention the whole way through. I guess when it comes to making videos, I don't feel like I've found my specific niche for the style of videos I want to make. Although that being said, I do think I'm close. When it comes to the longer videos, like the Smash GSP videos, or the Crouch 2 videos, or really just the Crouch videos in general, those are all longer style of videos with a lot of editing I want to do with them, and when I have to do that much editing, it takes a lot of time, and I start to lose motivation eventually, and then the videos take even longer to come out. But I did kind of figure that out a couple months ago, and I did in fact try to do lower edited content with the Pokemon Green Stream highlights. And that started out good. I think for the first couple of parts, I was doing perfectly fine. The problem is I also started to lose motivation for it. Cause even though I was able to put out more videos, it was still kind of the same thing. 
I mean, all of the stream highlights I did were just from one stream. It's basically like I just made one long video and then made six parts out of that long video. So it's like longer, heavier edited videos lose me, but so do making simple stream highlights. I think when it comes to the style of making videos that I want to do, I want to do things more like the Sephiroth video I made or the uh, Byleth slash Captain Falcon video I made a while back. Those aren't videos that took a long time to make. Again, the Sephiroth video took like a day and a half to two days and then the Captain Falcon video took less than a week. But despite the short editing time, I still really like how those videos ended up. So I'm thinking maybe do more stuff like that, but that doesn't necessarily mean I won't make stream highlights or compilations, higher edited videos, that kind of stuff. I, that's still on the table. It's just not going to be like a major focus for me, I, I think. And believe me, I have plenty of ideas for videos. I've got a whole notepad filled with them. And now that I don't really have a video backlog, I can actually start to do them now. And that feels really nice. And clearing up my whole video backlog with all the montages and stuff and having this whole new room set up, it uh, feels like a new chapter, I guess. And I'm sure you've already noticed, but to help signify that new chapter, I decided to change my outfit a little bit. Still got the hat and the glasses, although I did have to remove one of the pairs because it unfortunately got a crack in the bottom of the lens. Rest in peace. And instead of the old mint green button up, I've got an orange jacket and t-shirt combo. Because as much as I liked the look of the old button up, it was really small on me. Like, the sleeves went up to like, here? That and it was kind of hot, and it took a while to actually put on, and with summer, I just figured an open jacket and t-shirt would be a lot more comfortable for me. You know, I think it just occurred to me that I've never actually introduced myself on this channel. So let's go ahead and do that right now. My name is Zeter, otherwise known as Zeter Steel or Zeter Steel 966 mod. I am a 21 year old guy on the internet, and the only Zelda game I have ever 100%ed is Majora's Mask. I know I probably don't have to introduce myself at this point, considering I've already been making content for about 3 years or so, but I feel like I should make my presence known. And to help along with that, I have actually decided to do a little bit of channel branding. It's nothing too serious, I mean it's just a logo on a nice little background, but I feel like it's better to have that and make it seem like my channel is like actually a thing rather than a low resolution picture of Donkey Kong's house from the Donkey Kong Country TV show. Although I will miss it. Really, I will. And I mean the banner and everything is just temporary for now, but I mean really, everything is temporary right now. That's life. But I feel like it's a good step forward for the channel. Lastly with this update video I want to talk about a few plans I have upcoming with the channel. Primarily, I want to make two things very clear, and I would write all these on the whiteboard again, but again, I, I can't really write on it, I don't have the wheels, so whatever. One, weekly videos. At least. I've already kind of been doing this since I've been doing the Smash GSP montages and all that, but I want to make sure I can at least put out weekly content at least until the end of the year. I've been kind of cheating with that because the last week was outtakes and then this week is just an update video. Also, I feel like if I don't have any sort of regular content like that, the YouTube algorithm will hate me. Probably already does with how much I curse on my videos, but uh, fuck it. And not to say that there will only be one video a week, I'd like to do at least two, but uh, that's the minimum I'm setting, and if I can reach that goal for the rest of the year, I'll be happy. And two, growth of some sort for the channel. I mean, sure, everyone wants to grow on this platform, everyone wants to get bigger, but here's my thing. By the end of this year, at least, because that's the goal I'm setting for myself, I want at least 1,000 subs. And you might be saying to yourself, well, Zeter, why would you want 1,000 subs by the end of the year? And really, I care less about it being the end of the year, that's just the goal I'm setting for myself. But the reason I want 1,000 subs is for two reasons, one bigger and one smaller. The smaller reason being monetization. Because once I have 1,000 subs and I have an average watch time of I can monetize my videos and make a little bit of money on them. Granted, at the current state of my channel and by the time I would get to a thousand subs, I'd probably be making a dollar. But I mean, hey, it'd be a little bit of extra spending money and it would be cool to be able to say, I make money from making videos. That's just, like even if it's just a dollar, it's still kind of cool. And you would think that money would be the bigger reason, but no. The bigger reason for a thousand subs, actually, 
is for the channel itself. And that's kind of vague, but let me let me explain what's going on here. Now look at the channel page here. All right, it says Zeter Steel 966 mod. There are my videos, the banner, everything's good. But if you look at the top right there on the URL, that's not Zeter Steel 966 mod. Who the fuck is that? That is my original channel name back when I made the channel almost 10 years ago, which I originally made just to like videos I liked and add comments to videos I enjoyed. I was one of those people. And originally I had done it back in middle school just because me and a bunch of friends, a friend, wanted to think about making videos with doing like live action skits. So I figured like a name like Short Films University would be perfect for that. Unfortunately, we never followed through with those plans and I never really took advantage of the name. And now I'm stuck with it until I hit a thousand subs. Because once you hit a thousand subs, you can actually change your URL. All right, so I gotta correct myself here. Turns out that the URL I'm talking about here is a legacy username URL. Because my YouTube channel is old as fuck, this is what my channel's username originally was back when YouTube required a username. And unfortunately, as it turns out, YouTube doesn't allow me to change this. So even if I hit the sub count I wanted, I still wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. And about the thousand sub thing, turns out you only need a hundred subs in order to make a custom URL. Granted, I'm still gonna make a thousand the goal for me for monetization and whatnot, and I just feel like that's a good enough number to stop at, but still. So it looks like I'm stuck with the Short Films University URL for all eternity because YouTube used to be a better website. And yes, I'm still bitter about them removing annotations. And that's the main reason I want a thousand subs. Not for the money, more just because I want to erase the name. Not because I don't like it, just because it doesn't really fit the channel. And so that's really all I wanted to talk about right now. Uh, I, I, let's hope we can reach those goals. I hope this sort of helps get a better understanding of what I want to do with the channel and where we're going. And uh, yeah. And there are more channel specific things I want to do in the near future, like a best of video and a channel trailer, probably coming by the end of the month. Hopefully, we'll see. But before any of that really happens, um, it's June. And well, with June, uh, it's about that time of the year again. I originally recorded a bit for the 1.5 video where at the end it would continue on after where I cut the video off and then it would be something along the lines of but before we do anything else and then I snapped and then it would move on to my uh, newer setup but unfortunately I forgot to save that while I was deleting all the footage so that's thrown out the window and uh, here we are but uh, y you know I guess we'll, we'll just continue on from here.